So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tammy Bakshi and today I'm joined by Mark Sturdivant. Once again, you may have seen another tutorial uh, that I had with Mark just a little while ago. And now Mark's joining us back, so thank you very much for joining, Mark. Sure. Of course. Glad to have you on. So uh, now, Mark, today we're going to be talking about uh, Power AI Vision. We're going to be talking mm -hmm. about uh, this great new tool, runs on Power AI, and it allows us to do object detection and image classification tasks in really easy ways. In fact, more specifically, it works with images and videos as well. Now, you may have already seen I do have a video on Power AI Vision on my channel already. However, now there's a new version, and let's talk about Power AI Vision and what it can do now. So, Mark, I do know that quite a few of your code patterns and what you do revolve around Power AI. So, would you like to quickly sort of walk us through why you like Power AI Vision uh, and what you've been doing with it? Sure. Why I like Power AI Vision is um, well, partly being built on Power AI, you get the performance of the platform. You don't think a whole lot about installing all the pieces you'd need to do deep learning. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't even think about that when yes. I make Power AI Vision. And then what I really like is how easy it is to use. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't really have to think about you know, putting your images in different folders and writing code to label them. Yes. I like to code, but a bunch of yeah. that is it's things you just don't need to do. Yeah. So it's very simple in there. If you want to classify images, you're just going to drop them in there mm -hmm. and say what the classification is. If you want to do object detection, mm -hmm. you just grab your images and you draw boxes and press buttons and go and train. And then it's easy to test right there in the UI as well. Mm -hmm. You don't even need to write code to test it and see how it's working out. Mm -hmm. So it's mostly about ease of use to me. Yes, that's great, that's great. In fact, there are lots of extra features as well, like, I mean, as you were mentioning about the code and stuff. Really, deep learning, the majority of it isn't about the code, it's really more about the technique that you're putting behind that, the data that you're giving it, the technique, the architectures that you're using with the deep learning models. And then, of course, a big part of it is still the code and the optimizations you put into it and how exactly you're implementing it for your platform. But, now that we've talked about sort of why you like Power AI Vision, let's just quickly go over a few of the things that it allows us to do. Like for example, uh, of course, you can actually take a look at the pa code patterns that we have on Power AI Vision that Mark has developed. Uh, if you'd like to find out exactly how you can use Power AI Vision, in fact, in just a moment, Mark will be giving you a demo of Power AI Vision in action. But one more feature that I'm really a fan of is the fact that, for example, let's just say I'm trying to detect, say, Mark's demo, cars and videos. Now, of course, videos are fast. They have lots of images, and they're basically all put together. So if you're trying to find cars in all those images, you're going to need to label a lot of cars. And very little images. changes from one image to the next. Exactly. Very little changes. Very, very little. <laughs> if cars are moving by a few <laughs> pixels each time because they have such a high frame rate, yes. you don't want to keep labeling those boxes over and over and over again. And that's where Power AI Vision comes in. What it allows you to do is create training corpus corpuses and then upload those over to a model so it can actually get trained and once you've got a trained model and you can actually choose the kind of model you can use a faster RCNM recurrent, recurrent convolutional neural network you can use the you only look once yellow network the tiny version uh, you can use practically any kind of model you want uh, and from there you can use that model to actually retrain uh, or not retrain to auto label uh, data that's already in your training set uh, so let's just say there's some data that you haven't labeled yet, uh, like repetitive data, immediate frames after something you've already labeled, you can go ahead and have the service automatically label that for you using that trained model. And then you, as the domain expert, you know, the person who's trying to find the car as a human, you're just going to go through that. And all you need to do is make sure that the data is correct. You need to make sure that the data uh, is exactly what you want the model to predict. Once I, once I, draw a bounding box around a car, I don't need to say, and here's the car, here's the car, here's the car, here's yes. the car, here's the car. <laughs> it can figure that out. Even exactly. though the model's not complete, mm -hmm. you've got enough to do that. Exactly. And, and it will also say, and here's a similar car, similar car, similar exactly. car. Exactly. You can save yourself a lot of time with that. That is great. Um, and also with the augmentation, mm -hmm. that gives you a much bigger data set and better accuracy. Oh, yeah. So. There, again, it would be a little bit of code mm -hmm. if you're doing this in a notebook or something to say, all right, let's 
take these images and also augment them to expand my data set so yeah. I can recognize a car that's a little blurrier, a little fuzzier, yeah. a little different yeah. angle. Mm -hmm. Well, it can do that with a push of a button. Yeah. So you've got the easy interface to do some labeling. That's great. You've got the auto labeling, so it says, oh, I'll do some similar work yeah. for you, like that. Yeah. But then you also press that button, mm -hmm. and it's just a button, and you say, what kind of augmentation do you want? Um, sometimes upside down is a Okay. Yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. it's not. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're trying to do faces, you won't flip it upside down. Well, I, w I don't mind recognizing faces when they're upside down. I it's agree. It's still a face you would recognize. But if you're trying to do, say, facial recognition in some cases, you might want to recognize if it's upside down and make a right side up so you can do facial uh, feature detection. But it yeah. depends on the specific but use case. if you want to recognize and, and come and press that elevator button for yeah. somebody, that up arrow and that down arrow, yeah. they are not the same. Yeah. You don't want to flip those. So certain things, you know, yeah. but augmentation, so you, you get to choose those things and it's a press of a button and then your data set expands mm -hmm. and your uh, accuracy will be greatly improved. And to do that with just a push of a button is oh, great. Yeah. It's amazing. So like for example, if we've got, say, some sort of data set and we want to increase the amount of images in it, all you really need to do is, again, as you mentioned, Mark, you just push a button and it's going to mm -hmm. augment that data set by introducing new images, by doing simple things like cropping it a little bit, maybe adding yeah. a little blur to it, maybe uh, flipping it around horizontally or vertically, doing yes. all these sorts of little changes to make lots of versions of all those images mm -hmm. to increase sort of the neural networks, mm -hmm. um, grasp on what these things actually are. So it's actually able to find out what it's looking for rather than looking at other things in a scene and trying to correlate them uh, to what it's looking for. Yeah. So, so instead of instead of needing a bigger data set to create a great model, yes. sometimes a small one that's mm -hmm. been tortured and tweaked a little <laughs> bit yes. is almost as good as having a bunch of them. Exactly. And even if you have a really big data set, it's always good to augment it so that the neural network knows what it's doing when it sees like a flip image or anything, so it's invariant in that yeah, sense. Yeah, you might have too much of certain angles and lighting exactly. and focus mm -hmm. where the augmentation helps say, you know, it doesn't really matter whether it's a fuzzy picture or not. Exactly. A face is a face, mm -hmm. a button's a button. Yeah. yeah. All right, so now that we've talked about Power AI okay. Vision, what it allows you to do, of course, there are lots of more features. Like, as I mentioned, we just went through object detection, but there's also image classification. There are numerous other components. Uh, like, for example, image classification isn't just image classification. There's a bit more to it. What you can do is just like you can actually go through videos and images, and you can draw boxes around certain uh, objects and recognize what they are, you can also recognize, in general, what a scene, what an image depicts using, of course, the image classification feature. And the best part is that not only is it going to, as output, give you what class it believes images are, it's going to give you some more output. Like For example, it'll use the GradCam algorithm in order to provide a heat map of how exactly the neural network activated to each pixel in that image. So for example, let's just say we're trying to detect birds and we want to figure out, is the neural network looking at the bird to say it's a bird or is it looking at the sticks and branches to say it's a bird? Um, because, you know, some cases the model might overfit to saying, hey, if there's a branch, there's a bird because it's easier to take a branch than a bird. The great thing about deep learning is we didn't have to tell it exactly specifically how to recognize the bird. Yes. It figured it out without that, yes. which would be way too tedious to do. Oh, yeah. But that leaves a lot of magic <laughs> if you don't know what it was thinking. Exactly. So it's great to see the map. So you start to understand yeah. that it might not have been thinking the way you wanted it to. Exactly. So you're able yeah. to see those activation apps and be like, hey, the neural network isn't thinking how, we, how, we're, how it's supposed to. Maybe a bit more augmentation, or maybe a bit more data, maybe a bit uh, more accurate classification. Yeah. This is all stuff that can go behind yes. uh, your decision then. Usually you might not need to guide it that much. Usually it's just telling oh, yeah. you your data set is not going to give you the results you want. Exactly. Get a different data set. Exactly. Add to it. Do something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there are lots of other features, but now that we've talked about Power AI Vision uh, and what it can do, I think it's time to take a look at a demo of Power AI Vision in action. So Mark, would you like to show us a quick demo? Sure. I'll take a look at the uh, Counting Cars code pattern. So we can look at that, and that's available online at github.com slash IBM slash Power AI Counting Cars. And uh, here we took a video, a very simple, short video. We wanted it to be easy to go through for a developer and train, um, but then as the cars are coming, we identify them and track them and count them. That's perfect. And it's a good example of what you can do with Power AI in a video. Absolutely. All right, let's take a look at Power AI Vision. 
Here we are in Power AI Vision. So what we're going to do is first we'll create a data set just using a single short video and then we'll label some objects in that video. So I'll do manual labeling to label the cars on a few frames of the video. Then when we train and deploy that simple model, I'm going to use that and use automatic labeling to label cars in many more frames. So I'll just create a data set by giving it a name and I will drag and drop my video file to create a data set based on that one simple video file. It's a very similar process if you're creating a data set from images. Again, you can just drag and drop and import files. Next, I'll manually label some cars. So first I need to add an object. I'll just click on Add Object and call it a car. Now let's manually label some cars in this video. So I'll select the video and go into Label Objects. Now you have a nice editor. First, the first thing we need to do is pull some frames out of this video. So that's very easy here. We just click on Auto Capture Frames. I'm going to select every five seconds. It's only a 30 second video. So, and I only need a few frames right now. So I'll use Auto Capture. And you'll notice it selected the frames. Now I can go in and label cars. So I'll click on my label and then I'll just draw bounding boxes around the cars. Now this part, it's okay, it's kind of fun to do a little bit of manual labeling. Get to draw boxes around some cars. So I'll do some of this. Remember I'm trying to create my initial model. So six frames, about 30 cars should be a decent model for what I'm trying to do. Again, this is a simple example. But let's speed this up a little bit and get into auto labeling. So this part that I'm fast forwarding, it really only took a couple minutes, but you don't need to watch two minutes of me drawing boxes. I think you get the idea that manual labeling for a larger data set would be a bit of a problem. You really want to take advantage of that model that you can create with a small amount of labeling and then use that with automatic labeling to label many more frames with many more cars. I labeled 27 cars in six frames. So now I can click on Done Editing and we're ready to train our model. To train a model, Power AI Vision once again gives us a button so we don't have to do any coding. So I just press the Train button. I want to make sure that the type of training says Object Detection. Remember, we're not just doing car or not car. We want to detect each car in each image. So then I click the train button. Now training is going to take a little bit longer. So again, I'll speed this part up and then we'll come back and we'll do automatic labeling. Wow, that was fast. I guess it's mostly due to movie magic, but also we are running on power systems and leveraging GPUs. So now that I have this model ready to go, I'm going to click on model details. I'll deploy this model. So the model, once it's deployed, is ready to use. You can call it via REST API and do object detection in your code. But what I wanted to show you first is how we use this model with auto labeling to increase the number of labeled cars in frames in our video. The model's ready, so now let's go back to our cars data set. This is the original data set with the video with the 27 cars that I manually labeled. Now I'm going to go back in and click on Label Objects. I have a cars model that I can use now, so I'll click on Auto Label. This time let's do every second, and I'll choose my trained model, which is already deployed, called Cars Model. I click on Auto Label. Now this time I'm not going to speed up the video. This is going to be much faster than my manual attempt to label cars. So if you see, it's already done. It extracted probably 30 frames, and it labeled the cars in all the frames. Actually, the ones that are green here were auto-labeling. The ones that are done in blue are the ones that I manually labeled earlier. So I can just click through them. You can see all the labeling that it did for me. It's significantly increased our data set 
from 6 frames to 30 from 27 cars to I think 150. Now this is a very simple example uh, but in your real life use cases you probably have more complicated data sets you'll probably need more examples, better examples. But this is a great one for developers to try out and experiment with. So now let's train this again now that I've got 150 cars and that's the model I want to deploy that I will use in my example application for my code pattern. I hope you try out the code pattern. If you do, this is what you can produce. Now this is the same camera angle, the same road, different cars. We're using Python and we're calling that deployed model to locate cars and then we're using OpenCV to annotate the video and track them and count them. It's really a great code pattern. It's fun to try out and experiment with. Feel free to take it and innovate.